we start a fight. Oh, what do you say, Patrick? I didn't see you standing there. Good evening. What are you doing in town? This isn't payday for Tundle's crew. No, I'm just passing through on the way to Tundle's line camp. Oh? Hey, let's get that drink, kid. Charlie, look at that, will you? Now that's something a man could walk mighty proud in. You've been riding in the moonlight too much, Billy. A town like this ain't nobody can afford a pair of $40 boots. Except Billy, if he had it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something, Patrick. If I wasn't such an honest man, I'd sure be thinking mean about them boots. Why don't you save your money and buy them boots? Yeah, with two months' wages. There's only one way you'll ever own them boots. Is that what you got on your mind, Charlie? Forget it, Charlie. You and Billy are working cow hands now. No, nah, don't get riled up, Patrick. We're all friends around here, ain't we? Well, Charlie just trying to get a rise out of you. The trouble is, a man starts thinking wrong, the first thing you know, he's doing wrong. Oh, Patrick, poor man, ain't been a deputy long. You, you sure got religion, boy. No, no, no. Just trying to head off trouble. You've got a good job with Tundle. Work at it. And I don't like people telling me what to do. Maybe I don't like telling you, Billy, but I'm doing it just the same. <laughs> All right. I'll give it some thought. Be sure you do that. A man walk high in those boots, Charlie. Look at them shine, boy. Dancing boots, that's what I call them, Charlie. I know a man at Miss Silla. You do? What makes him special? He buys cattle. He got bad eyes, too. Can't read a brand at two feet. Wouldn't care much if he could. Remember all them lonesome cows we passed riding in? Maybe we ought to introduce them to that friend of mine. A couple of days' work, you'd own them boots, kid. A pair of silver spurs to put on them. That's what I like about you, Charlie. You sound just like a jingle of money. Come on, we got some stuff to pick up for Mr. Tundle. <laughs> seen a look on your face. <laughs> he needs another beer. You buy it. Uh, so you're Sheriff Brady's new deputy. Well, I work for Andy Gorman. <laughs> buy the man a beer. fun. Well, you had it. Now get out of town. Well, I tell you now, Brady Andy Gorman won't like him. 
You won't last very long. Lenny. There's a man who thinks you made a bad mistake hiring me as your deputy. If you wore a halo for a hat, there'd be some who'd say the same. Andy Gorman will be one of them. I've heard a lot about him. It's time I met him. He's a big man around here, Pat. I hope you won't tangle with him. You didn't ask many questions when you gave me this job. I'm not fussy about a man's past. Just the same, I made it a point to find out as much about you as I could. Did you find something that bothers you? No. Only black mark against you is your friend, Billy the Kid. He's still my friend. I knew that when I hired you. And what's the problem? Well, sometimes a man must make compromises. But I've got a hunch you won't. Maybe I've never found a good enough reason. Well, we'll see. Hey, Pat. Here's your first month's pay. I hear you had a lively time last night. Three new customers in the pokey. Uh, not much for Saturday night. Well, I guess it depends on your point of view. How do you like being a lawman? Well, it's easier than rustling cows for a buck. Less chance of a hanging, too. <laughs> the town council meeting last night, motion was passed to give you a raise. Yeah. That is, if you decide to stay permanently. <laughs> Drifting can get to be sort of a habit. But I always figured I'd know when the time came to put down some roots. Well, I guess you know that doesn't make me mad. And I've got no complaints. In some ways, this is a lazy man's job, and I admit the charge. Keep the drunks below the deadline, make sure they don't wear any guns on Sunday, head off trouble when you see it coming. No different from riding herd. Yeah. Except some cows are smarter than some cowpokes I've known. <laughs> oh, if you're not too sleepy, I'd like to ask a favor. I know we had a rough night, but my wife's been pestering me about taking her to church, and, you know, I... Well, I was figuring on loafing, but I might as well earn my money while I'm at it. I'll take over before noon. Sunday. I didn't ride in to go to church. I didn't think you had. To save you trouble, I'll take your guns now. Lenny, pick up the stuff. Don't bother me, cowboy. No bother. You don't wear a gun on the street on Sunday. I'll take care of it, boss. There's nothing to take care of. I'm Andy Gorman. Look, it's Sunday. The town is quiet. I like it that way. You get your guns back when you're right out of town. It's simple. Almost as simple as you are. If you think that tin badge you're wearing makes you something special, you tell Brady I don't think his joke is funny. Gorman! I didn't like a fuss on Sundays. One of you people, go get Sheriff Brady. It seems to me you're old enough to have better sense. You're under arrest. That good sense? Locking up Andy Corn. Are you turning loose? Well, of course I am. Without even bothering to find out why I threw him in the pokey. All right. 
Why? It doesn't matter. My fault for not knowing that some men would be privileged. Now, you know better than that. You're turning them loose, aren't you? Well, I've got to. Gorman's a... Gorman is a privileged man. You should make out a list for your deputies, naming the rules and the men who can break them. Like packing a gun on Sunday doesn't apply to Gorman. Most important would be the names of the men licensed to kill. No, you listen to me, Pat That's Harris. one rule I do not have to obey. You know, the law always meant a lot to me, even when I broke it. I always figured it worked the same for everybody. I was wrong. Pat. Put your badge back on, Pat. You just reminded me of something I've almost forgotten. I guess you'd call it a man's duty. Better get started on that loafing. You look like you got a bad case of the regrets, sir. Well, it isn't that. Gorman paid his fine. It's the first time in 40 years he's been bitten by the law. He doesn't like it. Get the horses. You've shown me where you stand, Brady. You can take it that way, if you want to. I rode into Lincoln today to see you, Brady. Too many of my cattle have been missing lately. As far as I'm concerned, it's because of Tundle and that outlaw crew of his, including Billy the Kid. A few years ago, I knew what to do, and I did it. His times haven't changed as much as I thought. I never knew paying a little fine to rattle a man so much. He intends to smash Lincoln County, every man who stands against him. Put the pieces in his pocket. When he makes this try, this country is going to explode like a two-dollar pistol. It's the funny thing about trouble. The more you worry about it, the bigger it gets. Uh -huh. You really think he meant all that talk about Tundle, I mean? Uh, another excuse for Gorman. He thought he could ride rough shot over Tundle. Mm -hmm. Found out different. He won't be fussy about proof. You sure about Billy, Pat? I mean, going straight? Well, I'm never sure about Billy. Only way to find out if Gorman is right is to catch those rustlers first. That would help. it would put it off that much longer. Mm. You sure that you want to find out? I'm sure. Either way. Good luck, Pat. Thanks. Since you turn honest. I'm going to talk with you, Charlie. How you been? Sound. Saw Pat. Still wearing a badge. Yeah. Only him, it looks all right, huh? Might look pretty good to me if I get caught. Pat couldn't hang an old pal. Ha <laughs> you think not? You mean being friends don't mean nothing to Pat? He's more to him than does to you and me, Charlie. He's just uh, different. He's honest. It's hard for guys like you and me to understand, right? Maybe you'd like me to pull out of the county to avoid stepping on Garrett's toes. That's why I rode up here. See you around, Charlie. Now look, Billy. We've been friends a long time, but that doesn't give you leave to run my business. Seems to me you've been doing all right with your business, Charlie. I counted better than 50 head of cows back up the draw. And I was glad to see that none of them were Mr. Tundles. What would you have done if they were Karen Tundles, Brand? I'd have waited here to hang you. You mean that, don't you, kid? Sometimes I think you and Garrett are too much alike. But I'm glad you come up here. I was going to look you up anyhow. I got your present. You 
isn't that much of a fellow to do something for nothing, Charlie. All right. What do you think of these boots are worth to you? Not a thing. Maybe I'm just hoping they might help to make you change your mind. Uh-huh. Well, in that case, you just uh, wasted your money, Charlie. Unless your feet are shrunk since the last time I saw you. It won't fit me. I owe you more than a pair of boots, kid. I think you mean that, Charlie. Never meant anything any more in my life. Try them on, kid. Maybe you're right. My hanging around here is bound to bring trouble sooner or later. Not with you over Tundall's beef and with Pat. Trouble is, I need a stake to travel on. And 50 head of cows will give it to me. But it takes more than one man to drive. Oh, now, wait a minute, Charlie. Wait a minute. Yeah. I had the idea there going to be no strings tied to these boots. And I meant it, kid. Look, it, it ain't like you were stealing them. Just give me a hand getting them on the move out of these hills. I'll take them the rest of the way alone. Oh, just that much for old time's sake. We've been pals. Yeah, we've been pals. <laughs> <laughs> I knew them were dancing boots, Charlie. I knew it, boy. All right. I'll tell you what, sir. You give me your word, you clear out when you get rid of that bunch of cows, all right? I never lied to a pal, Billy. I give you my word. Stop your gun, kid! You heard me, Billy. Friends, I told you it was Garrett's pal, Billy. They both been working for Tundle. I want both your names. For well, what, Grave Marcus? I don't make markers for rustlers, but I keep a record of the names of the men I hang. I want to face Tundle with them. Something to be hanged. Drag the other one over to that tree. I'll take care of this one. I'm going to kill you, Oranger. Oranger! I said leave him alone. I'll get the ropes. I know they call you Billy the Kid. What's your real name? My name is William H. Bonnie. You better remember that, Corman. Because we're going to meet up again sometime. What's his name? His name is Evers. And Tundle didn't have anything to do with this, Corman. Charlie quit better than a week ago. All right, Oranger. Hang him. Watch your partner swing first, Billy. That's enough. 
You didn't waste much time, did you? I don't intend to waste any now. Hang him, Oranger. He's my prisoner. You try to hang him, Orange, I'll put a bullet through your head. There's nothing I can do about the one you've already hanged. Range law says you've got that right. The range law doesn't figure if a man's under legal arrest. And he is. They were rustling my cattle. I caught them in the act. Aye, right, and then you can charge Billy here with rustling. Just be sure you're right. There's been only one man camped here. You'll have to prove it was Billy and not Charlie Evers. You keep pushing, don't you, Garrett? You know I can't prove it in court. I get paid to do my job. Right now, it's arresting Billy here for trying to steal some of your cows, if you say so. You'll have to prove it. Don't make me laugh. It won't work, Garrett. You used to be the kid's sidekick. Looks like you still are from the way you're acting. Maybe you've been... Don't say it, Gorman. Cut him loose, Orange. Billy! That charge of cow stealing gone. There'll be another time. Pick him up. Down, Billy. We'll bury him before we ride into town. I'm sorry, Patrick. About Charlie, I mean. You're always sorry, Billy. But it's too late. I didn't steal those cars. Just keep shoveling. I'll give you my word. If there been anything. Just hung around here too long, that's all. If I get back, I'm gonna clear out. Running away it won't help. Won't be your problem anyway. Just got one more thing to do. That's a promise. To kill Gorman? No, oh, Billy, you're gonna stay on a tundled ranch and keep trying. You're not telling me what to do, are you, Patrick? You'll do it. I believe you, Billy, about those cows. All right. All right, I'll try it. But you know, I keep thinking about the time when I won't feel this way anymore. That has to be up to you, Billy. something to do with this. I don't know. I... Maybe I could have talked you out of it, Charlie. I'm not sure like them boots, boy. 